Hi there, I'm Faida, and today we're going to be talking about the African diaspora in Bolivia. Freedom adore this country. I had the time of my life there and I'm thrilled to share this video with you now on the African diaspora in Bolivia. Bolivia is one of the most culturally interesting countries I've ever been to with a vibrant black community and culture. So if you're interested in doing a black history tour in Bolivia then please do let me know. Although the exact size of the African diaspora in Bolivia is unknown, there are estimated to be at least 25,000 Afro-Bolivians today. They predominantly live in Las Yungas, a narrow passage of forest situated on the eastern slope of the Andes Mountains. Among tourists, the region is best known for being home to one of the most dangerous roads in the world, nicknamed the Highway of Death. What most people don't know, however, is that this region is home to the highest concentration of black Bolivians in the country. Villages with high black populations include Mururata, Kuroiku, Chicaloma, Calacala, Coscoma and Irupana. Due to the hazardous roads, steep terrain and rock slides, these communities remain largely cut off from the rest of Bolivia, despite being less than 150 miles away from La Paz, the cultural capital of the country. Afro-Bolivians speak a mixture of Spanish and the indigenous language Aymara, and are mostly of the Roman Catholic faith. As was the case in so many Latin American countries during the Spanish colonial period, from the mid-1500s onwards, enslaved Africans were trafficked to Bolivia to replace the enslaved indigenous workforce, whose numbers dramatically dropped due to disease, war and the brutality of the Spanish regime. They were put to work in the silver mines of Potosí, where they endured appalling conditions, including cave-ins, explosions and toxic fumes, which led to high mortality rates. The enslaved Africans reportedly worked in the mines for four months at a time, after which they had to emerge blindfolded as their eyes were not accustomed to the light. As is still a common custom in Bolivia today, the slaves would chew coca leaves to combat hunger and altitude sickness. Slavery was abolished in Bolivia in 1825 when the country declared its independence from Spain. The Afro-Bolivian population largely relocated to Las Yungas region. This led to the fusion of afro ayamaran dress, music, food and customs that remain a staple of Afro-Bolivian culture to this day. One of the most visible legacies of African culture in Bolivia is the Saya music of the Afro-Bolivian community. Saya music blends Andean instruments with African drums and other percussive instruments. Afro-Bolivian women wear indigenous Ayamara style clothing when dancing Saya, including brightly coloured blouses, skirts and the characteristic bowler hat. The men wear a hat, a shirt and a sash around the waist. Both historically and today, Afro-Bolivians are often gravely overlooked and marginalised by the Bolivian government. Bolivia is the second poorest country in Latin America after Haiti and Afro-Bolivians are disproportionately affected. They contend with poor access to healthcare and education, lower life expectancy, less professional opportunities, higher illiteracy rates and on top of this they face racial discrimination. It was only in 2007 that the Bolivian government recognised Afro-Bolivians as a distinct cultural group and it was as late as 2010 when a law was passed actually criminalising racism and discrimination. That having been said, Afro-Bolivians are incredibly proud of their African heritage and have worked hard to preserve their culture. The Afro-Bolivian community even has its own king, traditionally from the town of Mururata. The current king is Julio Pinedo. September is Afro-Bolivian month and the 23rd of September is Bolivia's National Day of Afro-Bolivian Culture and People. In 2019, the Afro-Bolivian Centre for Integral and Community Development organised a performance between various Afro-Bolivian musical groups and musicians from Senegal in La Paz. Notable Afro-Bolivians include the late Marfa Inofuentes Perez, an activist who lobbied for the constitutional reform that finally recognised Afro-Bolivians as an ethnic minority in Bolivia. Monica Rey Gutierrez is a cultural leader and activist who is currently a delegate in the Plurinational Legislative Assembly of Bolivia. Jorge Medina was Bolivia's first black member of parliament. There have been several high-profile Afro-Bolivian footballers over the years, including Agosto Andaveris, Leonel Morales and Ramiro Castillo. 
In spite of the challenges, the Afro-Bolivian community continues to fight for recognition, better living conditions and the preservation of their rich African heritage. Freedom!